All right, we got Richard Wayne, transmission here, owner of Atomic Fab and Performance. Gonna get it unwrapped and start tearing it down. All right, so this converter was stuck in. We used a slide hammer assembly with a contraption of pullers. Anyway, it came out and it pulled the uh, front pump bushing with it, which doesn't surprise me, and it pulled the front seal because that's what you'd expect the, uh, the uh, front bushing to do when it pulls with the converter. So likely pretty good hub damage on the converter. And it looks like this bushing has spun in the pump which is no good. All right, fluid is uh, nastier and then, I mean, burned up. You can smell it bad, burned up. Probably plugged this transmission with a lot of clutch materials, my what I suspect. And the lube circuits got plugged up a little bit. <clears throat> um, you can see I'm peeling off the uh, pump bearing where GM makes its uh, puzzle piece here. And it's welded to the snout of the converter here. So we're gonna take that off and then just look at the snout itself. But regardless, this converter is gonna need to be cut open and uh, serviced. And possibly a new, uh, either if it can be reconditioned or a new, uh, a new hub put on the converter. All right, so we got some welded on pieces of the uh, pump bushing here. Extreme lack of lubrication, uh, <clears throat> possibly the pump wearing out and letting the uh, converter maybe hit a little bit uh, side load a little too hard I mean the combination of things here cause that pump bushing to fail we're gonna find out more as we get in you can see there it'll focus it's not a crack that's just where it delaminated from the bushing All right, we got the torque converter out, which was stuck, and we got the pan off. First impressions is what I see initially here. Uh, besides just pure chaos of burn down in here. Not a lot of metal, which is good, um, but just dark, dark, dark clutch burn up. Um, we see this Transgo pressure relief valve that they put in the HD2 kit. So I'm gonna suspect that this has the sandwiched uh, Transgo special uh, separator plate, which dual feeds it. Uh, non-internally we're gonna switch all that out but these are known to stick open and to not seal back when they relieve pressure and cause low line pressure and burn up um, these I know people say oh it's not a problem I've seen it be a problem so I don't like that but anyway um, we'll dig in further and see what else we got here <clears throat> all right so we got the valve body removed and it is indeed the Transgo uh, three-layer uh, separator plate, and that allows a dual feed through the plate through a small circuit. And one thing that I wanted to note here, here's a check ball here. It's got a Jake's Performance uh, accumulator, 3-4 accumulator delete, which is pretty common, but yet they still ran the uh, accumulator check balls. Interesting. Um, it doesn't matter that they're not needed once the accumulators are deleted on that there. So we have all eight check balls in our locations here. Um, fluid is just really smoked. So I'm hoping without the metal, the signs of the metal that the, uh, the actual drums aren't welded together and things like that. We, sometimes we see that in a big failure. Um, you can see it's got the standard HD2 Transco, uh, boost valve installed there. Uh, but other than that, this all looks pretty normal for what we'll see with an HD2 kit. Um, we're going to pull out the intermediate servo here and we're going to pull we're gonna pull the center support or the second feed bolt, and then also the fourth feed bolt. We'll pull those out and then we'll pull the pump and start on stacking the gear train, as well as pull off the, uh, the low band apply. So we'll go do that. Nothing, not a whole lot of metal, which is really encouraging, but I'm sure we have a full meltdown in the clutch set, probably the intermediate and directs for sure. We'll see what we got. All right, so we just got the pump out and everything looks fine here. No issues that I'm seeing yet as we go down. We do have a TCI input shaft there. It's a decent piece, um, better than stock. And we're gonna go ahead and open up the pump here itself and let's see what we see in the pump side. So we're gonna knock out these. Okay. 
All right. I'm expecting to see some damage in this pump based on the pump bushing spinning. So that's what I would expect to see here. Let's see if I can get this half with one hand to come out of here. Let's see if I can separate this here now. Okay, there's the half apart. All right, first indication on the stator side of things. Stator has got some wear in that area there. You can see the, the pump gears, not terrible, but I can, I can kind of feel that with my nail a little bit. Definitely pretty typical of these type of pumps. These pumps are pretty soft. They're a gray, you know, gray iron. Um, pretty soft, machinable iron, but nothing we can't throw a pump plate on. Um, and fix that up there. The real issue comes in when we get into the pocket side of the pump here. And I'm just kind of feeling these gears to begin with, just off of feel, because if you do this enough, you actually do get a feel for lips. And this isn't too bad. Actually, it's not too bad of a lip there. Okay, where the torque converter engages the lugs, those look pretty good. Okay, now side to side, doesn't feel terrible. I mean, we'll measure it all out, of course, but let's see if I can extract this. He's always kind of stick in here really good. Might have to uh, put the phone, oh, there it comes. Okay, let's look at that. Doesn't look terrible. Okay, now let's uh, go ahead and drain some of this oil out of here real quick. Uh, just spit this over the bucket here. Get the heavy stuff out. Now, pocket actually looks, that pocket where the pump gear rides actually looks pretty good. It's not chewed up. Sometimes we see these pretty chewed up. Now, I don't suspect that this unit had enough line pressure, and that's probably why this isn't um, too bad. When we start running elevated line pressures, it's just really, these gears get really hard on these uh, covers and, and stators. We, we have a stator plate, but we don't really have a solution to stop the wear on the, the pump side. Now, I have a looser pump in my, uh, in my truck. By looser, I've machined these gears down a thou and a half. And I did that because I put a fresh set in and they only had a half thou clearance, which is spec for GM, but it wasn't enough for the type of oils we run, racing and stuff, and the RPM that we use, and it galled up and shattered the gear set. So we want to run these on this. These are probably good the, the, where they're set up uh, for RPM and stuff from the pressure they'll make. But what we'll expect to see down the road is elevated wear in this pocket area with the higher line pressures we're going to run in this transmission down the road. So let's flip this over and see if I'm afraid this pump may not be usable because of the pump pushing that spun in there. And yep, that's what I'm, this cover is going to be shot because that pump bushing had a heyday in there. And I don't think we're gonna be able to get a bushing to get enough crush in there to hang on because we don't want to chance that. But that's the really the only flaw in the pump is uh, we lost this. And I'm wondering if the bushing wasn't staked. Let's go look at that real quick. It's out here. Let's see if it shows any signs of being staked in here. You really got to do everything you can to keep these in. And that's from my screwdriver there. That's not a stake mark. But I don't think this guy was staked in. But but even when it spun, yeah, it's possible. Maybe those are staking marks there. And when it spun, it just knocked them out. But anyway, that, uh, that pump doesn't look like that's going to hold another... Uh, hold a pump bushing in securely like we want. So we'll have to address that. All right, so we just pulled out the, the C-clip on the input shaft. Input shaft appears to have no damage, in good shape, um, good piece. Uh, overdrive planetary set. Um, it is the later style with the green sprag, a little smaller green sprag for overdrive. Planetary feel good, no damage seen there, no radial play. Everything looks healthy in this setup here. 
the sprag. Let's take that out. Take a look at these clutches real quick here. While I put the camera down. I don't, I don't expect to see anything in the overdrive clutch, but we're going to check it out. Okay, we pulled the snap ring. Overdrive clutches look, look pretty normal. No issue happening there. Okay, we'll move down the road into the forward drum next. All right, so we put this back together just for storage purposes. Uh, so it's all back and it's, you know, back the way it needs to be. So parts aren't flying around everywhere. Um, that is our overrun clutch. And this clutch is typically off uh, in the drive position in first, second, and third gear. And it is um, used for engine braking. So if you use manual one, two, or three, then these clutches come on. And this is what also assists that small sprag inside. So when people are racing and drive and they explode their planetary sets, it's because the clutch or the uh, sprag failed inside of here and they're not using the overrun clutches to support it. Now Sonex sells an overrun clutch kit to keep these on automatically in the drive range in first, second, and third. Um, good for snow plows, that's what they market it to as snow plows and things like that. Um, when we go to a manual valve body, the manual valve body automatically keeps these clutches applied in first, second, and third. There's no need to run anything else. Well, you can't because there's no provision for it, but it's done for you. And that strengthens the input, basically turning this all into an input shaft, all of this, because the forward clutch down here, the forward drum, I should say, not the forward clutch, but the forward drum is driven by the input planetary here, okay? So this is locked up. It, it's allowed to turn in one location and not the other. Um, but anyway, it, it's how it's done and how it overruns. But that is why you want to have that uh, mod done if you're running a stock valve body. You want to have that overrun clutch. I would put it in because a lot of people forget to put it into uh, drive three when they're drag racing or playing around on the street with a lot of horsepower. You blow these things up. They say, oh, the four ladies weak. No, it's not. It's not. You're not, you're not putting it in the right range. Again, if you're putting it in D3, you're doing the same thing as the Sonics kit, but if you forget one time and blow it up, that's where it causes the problem. But again, don't have to worry about it on a uh, full manual valve body. Now, going over to our fourth clutch here, this is um, the fourth clutch. This is what clutch comes on to, in addition, when third gear's on, to engage the overdrive uh, ratio. So we're gonna pull this out here and take a look at it. Here it, cut. Here it comes out, and again, not expecting any damage in here based on what we're seeing because it wasn't even utilized in, wasn't even utilized in drag racing, it's not. So yeah, I can already tell you that these look good. No issue there. Now we're gonna pull the forward out. That is the forward drum. Now we might start seeing something in the forward. And I can see that this forward drum has been replaced. It looks like a uh, India made drum or a Chinese made drum that's been replaced at some point. Let's pull that out and take a look and see what we got here. Hang on one second. All right, so we got our forward out and here is our bearing that rides between the forward and the input planetary, overdrive planetary. Let's look at the bushing in there, not pour up. First thing I'm gonna look for here is any ceiling ring contact and that's usually a sign of bad bushings that are giving me issues but i'm suspecting that oh uh, this is a this is a they've pressed in bushings on this one this has been refurbished so these have two little bushings that have been pressed in to refurbish so they bore this out to a bigger size and press it in those uh those ones there interesting okay let's take a look at the forward Based on the color of the drum, I don't expect that the forward burnt down, except that I am seeing some pretty heavy gunk right there. Let's see what we got in there. I can tell just by looking at the forward hub that that is an aftermarket hub. Um, it doesn't appear to be rollerized there in that location. It's just a standard brass washer there. But let's open up this forward. So I bet, I'm betting that's direct clutch coming from where this splines into. This splines into the direct. I'm betting the forwards are still okay. The forward clutch being a, not a dynamic clutch. Ooh, that was interesting. That just 
like spring loaded up. So maybe we are fried in here. Oh, there's barbecue going on here. Let's turn this upside down and see what we got. Oh boy. Yep, okay, so we had a full wine pressure issue. Completely burned this sucker down. Forward clutch is gone. I didn't think we'd find that, but as soon as I popped that snap ring, it lifted up, and that told me that the, the uh, steels were coned. And that's exactly what you can see. They're all coned here. I'm gonna set the phone down and try to separate these out so I can show you. Ooh, they are on there. Okay, well, I'm just gonna show you. The hub is still good. No issue with the hub at all. But uh, those clutches are welded together. We're gonna have to knock them off with the clutches and steels. They're all shot. So the forward completely burned down. Now let's talk about how the forward gets its, its, uh, its feed. How is the forward applied? So you have our piston down in here, which applies up with hydraulic lube underneath it. So hydraulic lube under line pressure will lift that piston and you know, stall these clutches out and apply this hub, which then drives your intermediate shaft down there, okay? That's in full, and the forward clutch is on in all forward gears. So it's not a dynamic clutch. It's not turning on and off while you're shifting through forward gears. First through fourth, the forward clutch is on all the time. Why does this burn down? Well, the truth is it didn't have enough clamping force and the clutches started slipping profusely and burned down. Well, why didn't it have enough clamping force? One, my suspect, and what I, I'm pretty sure is gonna turn out to be true, is the transmission experienced a very low line pressure condition when this was at a high horsepower event, running down the track, what have you. Um, in that moment, uh, there was not enough line pressure, and that would directly be caused by that valve body, pressure relief valve, which I showed earlier um, in a clip, that the Transgo kit has. So if that seat didn't seat all the way, now you have a huge line pressure leak, and it can't apply these clutches in the way that they should. I rarely see a forward meltdown. Now, when I see a forward go down, I can expect to see the intermediates are gone. I can expect to see the directs are gone because uh, unless it's just an isolated circuit or issue with the forward circuit. So how this clutch gets its apply oil is down in here between, you can see that feed hole right there. Well, that's fed through by right here at the input shaft. These two, these are, you know, these Teflon ceiling rings here, which are not cut. And if these were cut, that would be a dead giveaway there. Dead giveaway. But that's not it. These rings are intact. So pressure enters the hollow side of the input shaft up, up, in, uh, up in here where it goes through the stator tube up in here. So the pump, it's feeding through the pump, through the stator tube into, into this area up here and feeding down through the hollow shaft and comes out here, which feeds the forward clutch. Now. We usually see these start burning down when you have extreme bushing wear, but I'm not seeing extreme bushing wear in here. So this has got to be a hydraulic failure. Either it starved for oil, a clogged filter, uh, cavitated the pump, or pressure relief failure, which I've got to suspect. 100% on that Transco kit. That's why you do not put them in, guys. Don't do them. Do not use a Transco kit. This is a non-rollerized. It's a nice piece of a hub, but it's not rollerized. We'll fix that. Um, but yeah, the drum still appears to be okay. We'll go through it. It's gonna be a nasty job to clean this thing out. We'll have to see. But anyway, we might just put a whole new drum in it based on how it's been reconditioned, but we'll find out. So the forward's nuked, and we're gonna move on to the direction next and see what we got. All right, so we separated the, uh, we were able to get the clutches off there, but this is what's left. You can see what coning is when it cones, instead of being straight, like, well, there's clutches there that are straight, and these are just welded together. So complete failure in forward, in the forward clutch. All right, just for shits and giggles, we're gonna do a, a quick air test on the forward drum. And the way that we're gonna do that, like I said, this is where oil exits the drum through, between those ceiling rings and goes in down in between there and fills this and applies the piston. Oil enters on these two ceiling rings here, and that comes in from the stator tube. So we're gonna assemble this and then pressurize these holes here with some air and see if we can hear that applying. Now it's gonna be hard to show you because I'm one man band here and we'll, let, me, let me assemble this first and we'll go from there. So. 
Okay. Get that together. All right, so let's look at this now. Now we've got this sitting vertical as it would be in the transmission, like it's like that. So we can see this feed hole here. It's probably hard to see, but it's there. And then there's another one on the other side too. So it's got two feed holes. I'm gonna fix, I'm gonna block one of them, and then I'm gonna put compressed air on the other side. I'm gonna listen for that piston to apply. Now, because the clutches are out, I may pop the piston out. There's nothing to stop it from over traveling, but I'm just gonna see if I can hear it starting to pop open. Let's try that real quick. And I'm just gonna be using that there with some air. Hang on a second. All right, so sorry I can't take you along for the tour, but we're doing a little quick test here. And it is applying. You can, let me see if I can set the camera up in a way that you can actually see the drop apply. That'd be cool. And it's just basic hydraulics here, but um, stay, stay set there. Just like that. I'm coming over here to the front side if it will stay put. Fingers crossed. I can hear it, but you can probably see it. So what does that tell me? That tells me the hydraulic circuitry is still intact. That's working. But we didn't receive the line pressure we needed here to hold this clutch tight. So again, exactly what I said before, a loss of line pressure. Let's go on further and see what we got. Okay, I just watched the video because I couldn't see it. You probably noticed a little bit of air leaking around here around the input shaft here. Um, and this is the input shaft right there. And we're losing a little bit of air. You can see a little bubbling happen and that's not uncommon. One, we're not spinning, the shafts aren't spinning. Two, there's not ATF or fluid in there help sealing it. We're losing a little bit, but it applied fairly easily. And I don't think that there's a huge issue there, but I'm gonna look really carefully at this drum and possibly condemn it. We'll see just based on the surfaces in there and see how it looks. But yes, we did see a little bit of leaking here, but you also did see the piston applying. So, um, and anyway, that it's not, that's only about, um, 60 pounds, 60 PSI shop air that's applying that. So, um, now we'll move on. Okay. One other thing I just noticed here, this is the end of the input shaft out there. You see, it's kind of galled up. See if that'll focus. It's kind of galled up. Well, it's been galling up on the end of the main shaft and that's hard to see because it's not coming into focus, but that main shaft is all tore up where it touches that and they're not supposed to touch. So we have a clearance issue there. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's an aftermarket main shaft and sometimes they're a little bit closer and you need to trim them. But we'll have to do a stack up check on it and look at where the clearances are, but those should not be touching and that has been happening. Now, in the extreme case, it could actually push this up far enough to get a ceiling ring off of the forward clutch ceiling surface. And if that happened, that would explain this complete meltdown here of what happened there. Because if you lose those ceiling rings locations, if it's pushing up the whole input shaft that way and the ceiling ring comes off of its ceiling surface, you're gonna lose all hydraulic pressure, the clutch will fail. So that's something that's of interesting note right there. All right, so now we ran into a new issue. The direct drum does not want to pull out. It is locked in there. The band is free on it, I checked that. The band's not stuck on it. But the direct drum itself is not wanting to release and that should be sliding off of the center support. So we got to take some other measures to pull it out. We're going to start on that now. Okay, I've been working on this for a while, trying to get it out. It's not happening. It's not coming out. And what I suspect I'm going to find is the intermediates underneath are burned down just like the fours were, and they're locked on to uh, the, I'm sorry, the, <laughs> the sprag that's attached to the direct drum is going to be locked and welded into these intermediate clutches. And that's what we see when the intermediates burn down real bad. So I think that's what, why this won't come out. We're going to keep trying to get her out. We're going to have to start using a puller to pull it though. Okay. So in order to get this out, I'm unbuilding the direct clutch in place. And the well, first thing I notice, which is never, I've never, it's yeah, it's not good. The pressure plate, the first thing that came out was a steel. 
you should have a clutch right up against this pressure plate, not a steel. And you can see that these are all cooked. Um, they're not welded like the other ones, but they're baked. They've been fried. Uh, that should be that same color that you see in between all uh, the cross hatches there. This is a grooved clutch, but again, why does it have, I mean, someone's just trying to make up clearances with this here, which, uh, yeah, I don't like that at all. So, but that's not the reason this burned down, but they're, I'm betting this is only a five clutch in here, but someone's, it's odd that they're using a steel on the top. So we'll keep digging and see what we find. Okay, so we have the entire clutch back out, and this is exactly how it came out of here. They've taken out the wave plate, which is pretty common in a direct clutch. It is a five friction grooved direct clutch, but for whatever reason, um, they use the steel under the top pressure plate. You can see how coned this is. It's dished. That's supposed to be flat, and it is dished heavily. And this is what rides against the bonded piston there. Um, but that is a very dished apply steel. And then you can see every friction. It's got a slight dish to it too. Burned, steel, it's dished, friction, dished. Yes, they're all burned down. Direct's burnt down. But why? would you not run thicker steels? Because these are 76,000 steels here. So someone did not use the, uh, there's, they are 76,000 steels and there's 90,000 steels. And they use 76s and then add an extra one to take up space. That is a piss poor, uh, that is not the right way to do that. So you have to use 90,000 steels in here and then not throw an extra steel in here to make it up. That's just not the way it's done. Don't know who built this, but that's okay. I'm not gonna, I mean, maybe it was, you know, someone who first time, I don't know, and that's okay. But yeah, that's not the way to do it. So let's try to get this out now. Now we have a little more room to grab onto things, but I am positive those, those uh, intermediate clutches are just hanging on for dear life onto the, the uh, second gear sprag. All right, so now I'm having to make a tool with a broken, forward clutch hub um it's not the same type of it's not the same as the uh the hub that we're thinking about that's that this is what reaches in for um direct drive when the or third gear when the direct clutch comes on it locks to this but this one's cracked it uh this one's got a crack so it's junk and i'm using the forward drum because of the same exact pattern just to mock it up and so what I'm doing is putting that in there like that taking a bushing that fits down in there taking a center center punch here from an old harmonic balance puller kit we're going to line this up and then I'm going to weld this onto this here to these edges uh, as best I can and then we'll use this as a puller to extract we'll c-clip this in to that down there, and then we'll push off the snout there. With any luck, that'll work. All right, so it's still smoking hot. We just TIG welded that sucker on all along this. Uh, this is now a permit tool. We're gonna, like I said, C-clip that in there, and then drive off the center point with that to try to extract it from the intermediate clutches that are completely fried, I'm sure. Let's give it a go. All right, we're all set up here and we're pushing off that center shaft. We're gonna to try to pull this uh, direct drum and it sprag through, we'll see what happens here. So I don't like doing this, but when they're welded together, this is what you gotta do. And that is not part of the transmission that broke. That is the edge of that uh, broken hub that I welded. And that's fine because it was already broken. The good news is, is it pulled off. So don't mind that. That's just garbage from what was already broke. Now let's pull out our entire direct clutch here. And it did come free. Here's our direct clutch is. The direct clutch hub is here. So now I'm going to take off the snap ring here and take remove the tool and see what we got. Hang on one second.
All right, so here's our snap ring that we used to make that happen. And this is our good forward hub parts there. Okay, this is what we just made, and that was, like I said, that just broke off of there. But that worked, it pulled it out. Let's look on the bottom of this here and see what, we, what it looks like. Sprag didn't separate, that was good. Sprag still is intact. It's just a stock 34 element Sprag. Sprag is working, but I'm pretty sure those clutches were just cooked onto it. Let's go ahead and dig down through it and see if that was the case. It has to be. So here's our intermediate band, looks fine. No burning on the intermediate there. Okay, I gotta pull. It's got a 727 snap ring, the HD snap ring, that's good. Let's pull that snap ring and I'll bring you back. All right, I got the snap ring out of the groove and when I did, the whole clutch pack lifted up, which tells me it's coned. And then that's exactly what it was doing, was frying to. All right, well, here's our intermediate pressure plate. We'll just stack it up. There's the intermediate pressure plate. And again, we have a steel on the top. What in the hell? See how cone that is? There's not supposed to be a steel on the top. It's supposed to be a clutch riding against the pressure plate. What on earth is going on here? Totally coned out intermediate. Oh, no friction left on that side at all. Okay. And here's our next steel cone as well. Uh, next intermediate. Ooh, that looks like a flying saucer. How cone that sucker is. Next steel. And then we had our last friction, which has nothing on it, either side. And then our, that's not our last steel, I lied. Here's our last, our last friction, there's that. And we have another friction and a steel down here. Oh my goodness. There's some basic misassembly here that is um, not okay. You never have a steel. That pressure plate is designed to have a friction running on it, not a steel. So this is a, let's see, one, sorry, you can't see anything, two, three, four friction set with very thin, like very thin intermediates and a steel on the top and the bottom. I don't know who's doing this, and if it's a novice, then forgive me, I'm not trying to rip you, but uh, if any, I mean, this, this has to be a novice move because we don't do that. This is not what we do. There still is a cushion plate on the center support, which is uh, it's stuck down there. I'll get it out in a second, but um, yeah. So when these all cone, when these clutches cone like this, they effectively bite down on the direct drums sprag. This is called, uh, we'll use a pro mod drum going back, I'm pretty sure on this one, but they bite down and it's hard for me to separate this clutch pack out. So I couldn't pull this out of it. That's why I had to use a puller to do it. Yeah, every, uh, so first, second, and third, well, I'm sorry. First, there really isn't a first gear clutch. It's the forward clutch. But the forward clutch is smoked, intermediate clutch is smoked, high clutch is smoked. The overdrive clutches are fine because they weren't utilized. They weren't, had it been put into fourth, it would have smoked that. Had this been on, uh, those are still good, but it probably had enough pressure to run these. Plus, it doesn't smoke them because the sprag is there too. So the sprag is protecting the clutch, the clutch is protecting the sprag, both ways. So that's why those two clutch packs survived. Every other clutch pack, dead. Totally dead. The rest is gear trained down from there, and we'll go give that a view and see what it's got. But complete pressure loss of uh, hydraulic pressure in the system. Not adequate, burn everything down. Plus the stack ups on the forward, uh, I'm sorry, on the direct, and was it the direct or the, yes. The stack up on the direct and the intermediate having a steel 
against the pressure plate, it's not okay. Okay, this just keeps getting better, guys. Um, <laughs> so we've got the snap ring out for the center support and the uh, second gear feed bolt that holds the center support out. Um, but it still didn't want to come out. And you know, you would say, oh, it's just the cooler fitting and you got to make sure you get the cooler fitting too. But there's something else holding it. There's a cup plug right there. Why is there a cup plug there? Well, that's how you dual feed stuff. Well, sure enough, there's no second, um, there's no second ceiling ring on the center support. But the internal dual feed is done, but yet we're using a transgo separator plate to dual feed it. You do one or the other, you don't do both. So I would prefer always to have it done the way it is done in here, but why they use a transgo separator plate for dual feeding, this is all half-assed wrong. It, it, it's just not supposed to be like this. So anyway, yeah, one of the other guys, don't use a transgo plate and don't dual feed it internally at the same time. Um, the preferred method is to dual feed internally for sure. But we're gonna knock that cup plug out all together and we're gonna feed true dual feed because we'll have a manual valve body which feeds through both circuits. But yeah, this is just becoming more and more interesting as I go on. All right, so we're having some fun here. Um, we got the rest of the gear train out. We just got the rear band down in there. We got to pull that out. It is rollerized in the back. We've got a uh, rollerized bearing back there for this here. So someone's done something. They've also replaced the, um, they also have this washer here, which is typically in the case. So you can literally just take the case washer that normally goes down there, the thrust washer, and you put it here in place of the plastic washer, which is a cool mod. I mean, it's free, it's the exact same thickness and a little more durability. So yeah, this is usually down on the bottom of this, um, and then, or turn this way into that. But you can flip it around and go right in here. Everything looks, you know, stock down there. Nothing, nothing to get excited about. But anyway, that can drop right in there like that. That's fine, I have no issue with that. What I found though, which is interesting, is this is the sun gear that came off of it. And someone did something that actually is proprietary that I, that was told to me, I didn't figure it out myself. But you notice on the top and the bottom of the sun gear, they're notched there. And uh, I typically do it at the flutes. There, but someone, knew something about this and this is an oiling mod to keep more oil in this here but if they're going to do that oiling mod you should be closing off the main shaft here which goes up on the early style 96 and earlier or turbo 400 and feeds oil from the rear of the tail shaft all the way through the main shaft up into the forward clutch area to lube that where now the forward receives its uh lube oil through the stator and down through that area but um this is an aftermarket main shaft. Absolutely, I can tell that is there. That is not a stock main shaft. But you can see, if it will focus, just how much it's been grinding up against the input shaft. Because input shaft is supposed to be close, but not touch. But this has had an interference fit. This may not work anymore, we'll have to find out. But at any rate, um, so someone is doing some things that they've heard about or they know about, but, um, my issue is on my truck, this is out of my truck, and I even do the oiling mod, as you can see. This is getting fucked. That made it worse, hang on. Screen, got some oil on it. Hopefully that's better, probably not a lot. But um, I burn up, damn it, that is fogging. Hang on guys. Maybe that'll be better. Yeah, that's better. Okay. You can see, now we're on the upper planetary, but the back rear planetary, I overload my gears. Um, for a helical cut gear, this is a lot to ask out of it. And this is, I'm running a 485. I'm also notching my lube oil way bigger than the hole that comes provided. I didn't notice if they did it here or not. Nope, that's a stock lube hole there. So, but anyway, um, yeah, there's several mods that I do here, but I this is a maintenance item for me at my power level. I put one in every year. Um, I haven't had one blow out yet, but it's uh, something that I keep replacing. The planetaries always come out fine, and I run a, a five-pinion planet, but this is just a standard 480 four-pinion planet. 
But, um, and there's a big discussion if there, if there was a helical cut for all 85, and yes, there was. And there was also a 485 straight cut planetary. And so there's a big debate there, but they do both exist. Um, cause I have one, but anyway, um, that is toast and that's why I replaced those. He's not to that point yet. Um, but it is, you know, he's loading it pretty hard for sure. And you gotta make sure you get the right side up and you know, this, uh, this angle here goes down like that, not up. You can mix them up and have problems. But yeah, there's just been a few things like someone kind of knew what they were doing. It might be two different builds altogether. I don't know. Uh, usually you get a stock case like this. Someone gets it from the junkyard and then they put a transgo kit in it. And, uh, you know, HD kit and they run it pretty good up to around a thousand horsepower. But this is, uh, was at one point a two wheel drive unit. You can see this here because it has a reluctor for a two wheel drive unit, but it doesn't need it because it's running up through a transfer case. Um, it's got the four drive output shaft on it. So someone's gone through here, like I said, the stack up's wrong on the direct and the intermediate clutches. The clearance is set up wrong here on the input shaft against the main shaft. Um, yeah, there's just some stuff going on here that we've got to correct. But anyway, uh, the case is still good. There's no damage that I can see to the case. We can't reuse that, but uh, attention to detail and putting things together will keep this from happening. Um, conclusion. This is a separate issue. This did not cause the forward to burn down. We noticed we lost the forward, we lost the intermediate, we lost the direct. All three of the drive gears for one, two, and three were toast. This transmission should have not been able to move at all at this point. Um, that is a complete fluid pressure, hydraulic fluid pressure loss, uh, burn down. And I suspect it is off that sock valve body over there that did it. Um, and we're gonna have to go back and build it way better, way stronger for what Richard's doing with this. Anyway, that's that.